Welcome back. This will be part three in Amaya to Unreal uh, environment tutorial series. Last video we talked about how uh, to set up a Unreal project and the basic UI and navigation within Unreal. So this project we're going to import in our models into Unreal, uh, remove out this default environment, and uh, drag in our model so that we can see it uh, into our world view or our level. So in Unreal, one thing I didn't show in the last video is how to play. Uh, this is already a playable version of a, a level, and all you have to do is hit play. That will possess this third person character. I can left click uh, in that uh, level view and move my camera around to see what my character is doing. I can also hit WASD, and that's the default for walking around or it's now running. So uh, this is all set up as default. We don't have to do anything. So WSD moves around, uh, spacebar jumps. There's already collisions and everything kind of set up with these environmental pieces. Uh, and then the mouse bar or mouse button or mouse movement rather <clears throat> uh, moves the uh, looks the camera around in whatever direction we move around. Um, so collisions are already set up with everything that the character needs to collide with. And uh, what I did is just hit the play button up there. You can hit the escape key on the keyboard to get out of play mode, but play allows you to play your level and see how everything works with each other. All right, so I'm going to zoom out here. Um, we don't want to just drag, select, and delete everything because there are key components that we want to keep. Uh, but I don't need these like uh, traversal environment pieces right now, so I'm going to select those in the world view and hit the delete key. Uh, so I don't need any of these. I'm going to delete all of these out. And I'll need this cube thing. <clears throat> uh, if you look in the outliner, there was a folder called walkway that those particular objects were on. I don't need that folder either, so I'm going to delete that. I don't need these larger walls on the outside. Those are really meant to keep the player from falling off the side. Uh, so I don't need those. I'm mean, going to keep this ground surface so that the player won't fall off on, uh, you know, in, into the abyss. I'm going to leave that for the time being. Uh, there is some text that says third person. I can select that and delete that as well. I don't need that. And there's a little question mark, which is a help tab. Uh, I don't need that as well. I don't need the documentation tab. Uh, that's some, a good way to go back and look for some more documentation and help. Click open help URL. Uh, so if you click that, um, you will open it up and go that way. So I don't, I don't need to look at it now, but good reference there. So I don't need that particular node delete that out. So things that I do need that you should not delete. Uh, there is a player start for our point of view. There's a network player start, but let's just leave that in there for now. Uh, we definitely don't delete our third person character that has a camera associated with it, so don't delete that. Here's our main directional light source. Oops, let's come over here and look at it. So it's like a directional light, so don't delete that. Uh, there is a spherical reflection node as well. Cursor is acting up on me here. What is going on? My cursor and everything won't move around. Uh, there's also an atmospheric fog. Don't delete that. And then there is a uh, bounding wireframe box. There's two of them actually. There's one called a light mass importance volume and a post-processing volume. Don't delete those either, okay? All right, uh, I'm gonna pause the video quickly so I can figure out why my screen is locked up, uh, and then we'll come back. So, all right, I'm back. Uh, so I'm not sure what was locking up my screen, uh, but now I have free realm to move around again. So there are those things that we should not delete. Uh, I just have a basic ground surface so that I can make sure the player doesn't fall off when I'm testing playing. When I delete these extra objects, uh, there's some ground shadows things that are going to be visible. Uh, and this is from the baked static lighting. So in real as default, we'll try to save on what it has to render by taking any object that does not ever move and bake the lighting down onto a second UV map. Um, it does not mess up the original object's geometry, but it creates a second UV channel uh, that it saves all the light detail. So that makes the lighting render faster. Um, but sometimes we can't do that, uh, so we'll make the adjustment for our combined level scene here in a minute by not using static lighting. We're going to change that to dynamic lighting. Um, 
But anyway, so we've removed uh, objects away. The lighting from those objects is still in our scene. So we need to rebuild the lighting. So if I go to the drop down beside build and do build lighting only, I need to build the lighting for my level. So that way those ground shadows that were from previous objects are no longer there anymore. The bottom right is going to say build and lighting. If a firewall uh, window pops up, click allow access and then build the lighting. So it didn't take too long, but the more complex your scene is, the longer that's going to take to build the lighting. So we only build the lighting when we want to have static lighting, lighting on objects that doesn't ever change. Um, so that way my ground shadows and things like that are gone now. The character does not have a static lighting because it's a movable object. So as I play, that shadow should change depending on what the player is doing. So any object that needs to move, we want to make sure uh, that that object is set to movable as well. All right. So we have our clear scene uh, in a third person template. Now we're ready to import. So here is uh, my folder that has all of my FBX files that we exported from Maya and all of my texture maps. Um, let's uh, go ahead and import the combined one. So let's see, mod props combined export. And exporting and importing is probably the easier part. Uh, so if I come in here and choose Mod Props Combined Export FBX, uh, before I do anything else, let's go ahead and make a new folder. So in the Content folder over here, so if you click this little button right there to see the Content folder, I want to make sure I select Content and right click and choose New Folder. Anytime you're creating new content, let's create a new folder. So let's say uh, Mod Props, there you go. Alright, so in that folder, uh, I'm going to drag in my FBX file. So mod props folder. Here's my mod props combined FBX. And I'm going to drag that into this folder here. So drag it into this blank drop files here or right click to create content. There you go. So import window is going to come up. Uh, I want to make sure create new materials is on because I have a bunch of materials that's actually going to import. And that's it. That's all the changes I'm going to make here. So let's do import all. I have a lot of materials, but I have one object, so it's going to take a minute or two for this to import everything. Um, this combined version has one mesh that will drag into our world, and then it's going to have 15, 20 different materials. Read these warnings. Uh, the yellow exclamation mark is a warning. Uh, red means that's an error. So error means it's not important properly. Warnings means there could be some things that are not uh, working properly, but probably won't have any major errors. Uh, so read them. I know these two are not going to cause any issues. This is a degenerate tangent, zero binormals. Uh, that's not going to cause any issues with what we're going to do here. Um, so the next thing it's going to do is try to compile the shaders, which is any material that is in Maya. It has to load that shader and make sure it's compiling them. So that way when I'm using them, open them up, closing them, editing them, it has to do less work as, as it goes on. Let it finish. Uh, so let's roll this up a little bit so you can see everything. So the cyan blue node here that shows the visual example of my model, that is a static mesh. The green under or green underbar there are all materials. So I have my different materials. They didn't actually bring in the texture maps, which is fine. We'll have to mainly do that. Um, but uh, they did bring the materials. That's the important part. Um, so what I'm going to show now is how to drag this in, and this is a pretty easy process as well. I'm going to take that um, FBX file. Before I do that, let's go ahead and make some subfolders here. So in this mod props folder, uh, just so that we don't have everything in the same folder, um, we're going to have a lot of files. So let's right click and choose meshes. Uh, right click, choose new folder. I'll title that one meshes. Okay, and I'm going to drag that mod prop combine export into that meshes folder. I'm going to choose move here. Okay, so now I have a subfolder called meshes. Back in mod props, I'm going to right click and choose new folder, and we'll call this one materials. And then I'm going to drag or shift select on all of my materials, drag those into materials. Choose move here. Let it update where it's positioning everything. Okay. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is create a folder and call this one textures. So these would be all the texture maps that I need to import. 
Um, okay, so uh, meshes, what I'm going to do is import in the individual objects as well. So let's go modular prop setup um, or combine. That was our combined one. And then I'm going to select my four individual parts. Now, if this is my entire environment, I would have a lot more than four individual parts. But if I wanted to, from a level design standpoint, manually place everything in Unreal, it's more accurate. We can do a lot more with our scene when we do it this way. But it requires a little bit more process and setup. Um, then I would import all of my individual parts from my environment as individual FBXs. So here are my four FBX files in my meshes subfolder of my mod props file or folder. I'm going to drag those four in. Now I've actually already imported in the materials for these four objects when I imported my combined one. So for these four individual ones, I'm going to choose do not create material because I've already imported in all those materials. I don't have to have duplicate copies. So material import method, do not create material. And then let's choose import all. No warnings, so we're good there. So that put those four materials or, or meshes individually in my meshes folder. One more thing we need to import in is our textures. Let's go to our textures folder in our content folder. Uh, and we're gonna select all of our textures. So I have some JPEG images. Uh, let's select those and drag them in. And then let's go over to Unreal. Uh, one thing it will give you is not a warning, it's just telling you, hey, I think uh, some of your files are actually meant to be normal maps. Would you like me to import these as normal maps? So I just let it run because some of these files, like this blue one right here, is a normal map, and Unreal will import it in as a proper normal map. All right, so in my textures folder, I imported those. I have other texture maps, which are PNGs. So I'm going to select all of those and drag those in as well. So I have a lot of texture maps here because I have a lot of different parts for my environment. You may not have this amount of parts. All right, it's converting things to normals, it's pulling things in properly. And it should show us all of our texture maps as a preview. Texture maps come in as like a reddish, almost a little bit of a pink color uh, bar at the bottom of it. So this is a texture map. So it's nice is that Unreal color coordinates everything's, everything so that it's kind of easy to know what kind of object or node this is. All right, all right so there's all of my textures. Okay, they're all loaded in there, ready to be applied to the materials. All right, so all of our objects, uh, meshes, my combined one, or if you wanted to do individual objects, they are all imported in. My materials are all imported. My textures are all imported. Uh, so that'll wrap up this video. The next video, what we'll do is assign our textures to the materials and make sure our materials are applied to our static meshes, the imported models properly. Um, and then adjust scale. So that'll wrap it up for this video.